At this time, we want to share our history bit today. And as I mentioned about a month ago, I said that I was going to be sharing for some time with regard to the Shabbat. And I have been using the resource that I developed some years ago called History of Sabbath Keeping in the Messianic Community Throughout the Centuries. And uh, this particular resource is very handy. It contains nothing but historical quotations that has been given by historians that have lived from the time of the second century moving forward. And so our aim is to provide you with information regarding the history of the Shabbat being an integral part of the faith of our ancient predecessors and how that in knowing this history, it helps us to be able to have a more secure foundation in our practice while living in a religious environment in the Western world that is so very much opposed to those things that have to do with the Shabbat. And so I want to read a section of quotes that deal with Sabbath observance through the centuries in the 6th century CE or AD. The Scottish Church. In this quote, quote rather, quote, in this latter instance, they seem to have followed a custom of which we find traces in the early monastic church of Ireland, by which they held Saturday to be the Sabbath on which they rested from all their labors. This was written by W.T. Skeen in Life of St. Columns. This was written in 1874, page 96. Another quote with regard to Scotland and Ireland. Quote, we seem to see here an allusion to the custom observed in the early monastic church of Ireland of keeping the day of rest on Saturday or the Sabbath. And this is written in a book called History of the Catholic Church in Scotland, volume one, page 86. Another quote, this is with regard to Scotland, Columba, quote, having continued his labors in Scotland 34 years, he clearly and openly foretold his death. And on Saturday, the month of June, said to his disciples, his disciple rather, dear Mitt, this day is called the Sabbath, that is the rest day, and such will it truly be to me, for it will put an end to my labors. And this was written in a book called Butler's Lives of the Saints, volume one. And this was written as noted in AD 597. <coughs> this was concerning St. Columba on page 762. Last quote. This is also about Columba. And it says, <clears throat> the editor of the best biography of Columba says in a footnote, 
our Saturday, the custom to call the Lord's Day Sabbath did not commence until a thousand years later. And this was noted by Adam Nan's Life of Columba, written in Dublin, 1857, page 230. Now, these quotes that have been shared today have to do with the practices of the church in Scotland and in Ireland. How many of you are familiar with <clears throat> St. Patrick? Mm -hmm. Most of us are familiar with St. Patrick. Some time ago, we did a history bit on mm -hmm. St. Patrick, but we provided the history from a non-Catholic perspective. The Catholic Church chose to adopt St. Patrick as one of its saints. But the true history was that St. Patrick had no connection with Rome at all. St. Patrick was a disciple of the church in Scotland. And the history regarding the church in Scotland is that the disciples of the Apostle John that had migrated through Spain and going north into those regions of Scotland brought the faith there. And when they brought the faith there, they were practitioners of the Shabbat. They kept the Sabbath. And so this information that we are reading, and it notes about Columba. Columba was one who, in receiving his understanding about the things of Elohim, also embraced the Sabbath. Before Rome came into the region of Ireland and Scotland and forced the Roman religious system upon them before they came. The church in Scotland and the church of Ireland were Sabbath keeping. And so it's important that we are mindful that there were many, many congregations scattered throughout Western Europe that initially did not have their beginnings with the Roman Catholic system. But the reason why much of these lands in our present day are dominated by Catholic influence is because as was the rule of the Roman Catholic Church, they used the muscle of the Roman government to come in and to force the congregations that were already existing to conform to Catholic doctrine. And so it's important that we be mindful of this. Here in the 500s, in the 6th century, we have evidence of how in Scotland and in Ireland they worshiped on the Shabbat, they rested on the Shabbat, and we see a rich history of how the Shabbat is a part of our faith. Without this historical information, we would not have an accurate historical picture of what was happening in the sixth century in Scotland and Ireland. So we bless the Most High for this information, and I hope that it helps to encourage you and solidify your faith the more and appreciate the roots of our heritage in our Messiah. The Most High be praised. Hallelujah.